In the Flinders Ranges, 530 kilometres north of Adelaide, American paleontologist Dr Mary Droser returns to the hills that have enthralled her for a quarter of a century. While it's hard to imagine now, 550 million years ago, this was an ocean, and the creatures that lived on the seafloor have left their mark. These rocks capture the dawn of animal life. And so imagine turning over a rock and having those fossils see the light of day the first time in over half a billion years. I think dirt is good for you. Well, you have enough here. I first met Mary and her family 12 years ago at Nilpena Station's rustic shearers' quarters. It's been their home away from home since Mary's kids were in nappies. Look at that. As the University of California professor and her team peeled back the layers of the rocky hills nearby. I get excited months leading up to even coming here, and once I'm here, I can barely stand it. My first day here, I'm always up at, like, five because I can't get out here fast enough. Last time I was here, you were like, I can't contain myself when I'm here. I can't wait to get out there. And what about now? I'm even worse. I think I, it, is, it is such a privilege to work here. I, there is no day in my life that is nicer than sitting on a fossil bed looking at fossils and having this as my view and working on these crazy things that we uncover. Those crazy things are fossils of soft-bodied organisms that existed before animals had skeletons. They were first discovered by Australian geologist Reg Sprigg in 1946 in the Ediacara Hills north of Nilpena Station. So the era when these marine creatures existed is known as the Ediacaran period. Mary Droser and her team, along with experts from the South Australian Museum, have now excavated more than 40 ancient seabeds. And one I haven't seen before, which is the largest, is known as fun bed. But I don't want to damage any of this. Are there rules for stepping on this? Right in the middle of the big rocks. You okay. have small feet. <laughs> so is it full of different types of organisms? Yes. As you look across the surface, you can see lots of bumps and squiggles, and every inch of this surface is covered with the fossilised remains of organisms. There are about 25 different types of organisms here. Some are familiar, like the poster child of the Ediacaran period, Dickinsonia, and the fossil named after Reg Sprigg, Sprigina. So what are some of the more interesting bumps, bumps and squiggles you've found? Well, they are bumps and squiggles or pits. So if we look here, this is Obama's. Named after President Obama? Named after <laughs> President Obama. Does he know? We did send them a letter, and it, we were requested to send uh, replicas and the paper to, for the Obama Library in Chicago, so somebody knows. <laughs> and why did you name this particular one after him? We named it after him because of his advocacy for science. What other little funky things have you discovered? So, amongst very funky things, we have this organism over here, which is called Quaestio Simpsonorum, which has oh. a question mark in the middle of it. Oh, it does too. You haven't found this one before? No, so this was newly discovered from this bed, and we have about 15 on this bed. And it's, like, totally wacky. Someone who has worked on these hills almost as long as Mary Droser is son Ian Hughes. All the other beds are really big, and so I couldn't really take any rocks out because, you know, I'm not, like, a strong man, and I definitely wasn't as strong as I am now at the time. So she's like, all right, well, you can just go dig over there. You seem to have upgraded to a bigger pit this time. Yeah, it's got to be at least 10 times bigger, if not 20. <laughs> Like his mother, Ian, who is now 25, is addicted to the landscape and what's buried in it. And now, at full strength, he's relished playing a big part in excavating Funbed. This pit itself is kind of unique. 
in the sense that oftentimes we have multiple layers of beds stacked on top of each other that hold fossils. So we're very delicate in that we like peel back each layer. But what's strange about this pit is that there's actually really only one fossiliferous bed and everything above it is basically just rock. So we we're really lucky in that we can really just whack pretty hard down to the, the bed surface. The PhD marine biology student at Harvard University dedicates a good deal of his time to Earth's ancient sea creatures, writing papers on new discoveries at Nilpena, including the worm-like Uncas, which Ian named last year. We're really quite confident that it was uh, an early ectisozoan, and so this is a member of a, a group of animals that includes things like insects and nematode worms. So a really exciting advanced fossil for the Ediacara. More than 40 different types of soft-bodied organisms have now been identified at Nilpena, which brings me to this track. So last time we were here, we followed a track to something that you thought was like the closest relative to, to us. Exactly. Did you find it? Uh, we did. We did find it. We found one at the end of a track, and we found about 100 on this bed that you're looking at right now. OK, you know, like, the anticipation is high. <laughs> I know, I know. And all I'm going to say is you're going to be like, is that really it? It looks like a tiny rice grain, to be honest, but such a significant fossil, one of the most significant fossils we have here, if not the most, because it's our oldest relative and it's the oldest organism known that had a through gut, which means one way in and a different way out. I like things which aren't too showy. Right, right, <laughs> subtle. Our, our you know, oldest ancestor was subtle, quiet. <laughs> While Mary's team still relies on the same basic tools like silly putty and dish brushes for much of the work, it's also turned to new technologies to accurately map beds. Most of these body plans are extinct. Like I would love and uses a laser scanner to detect the tiniest of fossils, like our little relative Ikaria. So that's the laser on the fossil that's right there. The scanner was funded by NASA, which pays for much of Mary Drosa's work at Nilpena. There's a lot of planets out there, but so far only one has life. So if you want to know how life evolves on a planet, you go deep time in Earth and see how did life evolve on planet Earth? Okay. That's okay. <laughs> While Mary's kids have grown up with a deep appreciation for this... That's a beautiful <laughs> Trivocidium. Australian students are often not aware what's on their doorstep. And all around, you see that like little yes. pucker, micro pucker? Yes. That's microbial mat. And they're just like oh. hanging out there. Oh. But these primary and secondary science teachers from across the state are hoping to change that after visiting the fossil site. It's not our backyard, but it, it basically is. And yeah, it really should be taught in schools. It's such an um, important scientific discovery. And um, yeah, we just have the access to it here. Just gather around in here and I'll explain a little bit about the history of Nilpena. It's also a chance for the teachers to learn about the area's pastoral history from Ross and Jane Farga, who call Nilpena home. Our family have been in the area for six generations and um, so anyway we bought uh, yeah, Nilpena in 82 and um, at the time we were running sheep and cattle. In 96 we had our last shearing here in this, this beautiful old wool shed and um, then we've just been a, a old cattle enterprise since then. Ross also knows a thing or two about the creatures that came long before the cattle. He found the first fossil in the hills that have become Mary Drosa's playground and put Nilpena on the map. Although not everyone was convinced the Fargas had bought something special in the early days. I think at the time Ross's family bought Nilpena and my father had a station the other side of the lake and he came over and it was drought stricken property and there were dead cattle everywhere in the creek beds and he'd said something, made the comment about the god forsaken place and I just think that if he were alive today he would be completely amazed to think that is literally where animal life began on earth. Now the Fargas are farewelling the property that has delivered more than they ever imagined. 
Six years ago, they sold two-thirds of Nilpena Station to the South Australian government, which turned it into a national park. We were keen to not just sell it as a pastoral lease because the next people that bought it may not be interested in fossils. And we thought it was very important to, to leave that legacy of, of uh, protecting those fossils into the, into the future. And now, as the site attracts more attention and visitors, the Fargas, who also own a cattle property in the Coorong and the iconic Prairie Hotel at Parachilna, have decided to sell the rest of Nilpena Station to the state government. It'll probably hit home when we drive out with our last load of gear from the homestead at the end of the year. That's probably when we'll really notice it. But at the moment, it still feels like it's our place. The new manager of Nilpena, the National Parks and Wildlife Service, has been working with the Fargas and scientists on how to take the rare site to the next level. Here's the final piece. Yep, you bet. So, this way here and this way there. Thank you. Yep. From stabilising fossil beds out in the field to improving access and shifting fun bed off this exposed hillside. It is the one bed out of the 40 plus beds that we have up here that actually has a surface that is a little bit delicate. And the rest of the beds were like, yeah, they can stay out for another million years. Nothing's going to happen. This bed, we're like, yeah, no, not so much another million years. So we want to um, get it protected. There's not a world where you envisage will take the best bit into the woolshed and another bit. You know, it's like cutting the Mona Lisa in half, right? As National Parks works out the logistics of this move, it's also finalising another ambitious project that's been a decade in the making. After gaining the support of the local community, pastoralists and traditional owners, the Adnumatna people, it's nominating a series of fossil sites in the Flinders, including Nilpena, for a spot on UNESCO's World Heritage List for collectively telling the story of the dawn of animal life. Our world heritage is about the best of the best, yeah. It is places that are so significant for humanity, whether they're natural or cultural things, that, that they're worthy of, of celebrating. And, you know, really there's not that many places on the, on the planet that are on the world heritage list. All right, let's see what this guy looks like. It's not a Kimberella. It's definitely not a Kimberella. Something new. Something new for sure. Mary has spent a lot of time helping with the World Heritage bid, but searching for ancient life forms is still the best part of the job. So weird. So weird. Last time you said, we've just uncovered the, the tip of the iceberg. Yep. How much of that iceberg have you now uncovered? I would say we're way more than the tip, and I'd say we're starting to understand how these communities functioned. We're starting to get a handle on what was living here. Doesn't mean there isn't a lot more to do, but we, we've come a long way. So yes, I have no plan of ending in the very near future. I have a lot of great students who will continue to work here because one day it will be very hard for me to make it up these hills. <laughs> While the research will continue, it is the end of an era, as the pastoralists who open the gates for the paleontologists prepare to exit. <laughs> Good to have you here again. Always, always. Well, it's my home. Yeah. It's home. But this friendship forged over fossils is also likely to stand the test of time. Jane and Ross are family. You know, my kids grew up with them as family. We know them so well. Very sad for us. Very, very sad. Yeah, terribly sad. But I think you have to look at the future and how things move ahead and what's best for everybody. It is wonderful to have this legacy of the park. This is their legacy. What an amazing legacy. 